Now, not everything is uh, plus plus. There are, of course, ecological parasitic relationships as well that we'll cover right now. Mer mutualistic relationships are plus plus. In ecology, parasitic relationships are plus minus. Somebody wins, somebody loses. Now, this is essentially going to be when we absorb nutrients from a living host, something we already established, but we'll reiterate just to make sure we're clear. Absorb nutrients, N-U-T-R for nutrients, from a living host, but there's no reciprocation right now. There's no giving back. A good example of this that to remember is the chestnut blight. This is a very, very parasitic fungi in plants. So that's a plant-fungus parasitic relationship. And there's also this term to remember known as mycosis. So remember the myc, mice type of root? This is the same thing, but now we're talking about mycosis. This is going to actually be a, a syndrome, a disease, a problem with a parasitic fungus. This is essentially a fungal infection. This is a fungal infection entirely. And that's what the is, cis part of this word is. And the myco refers to the fungus. So we have a fungal infection, and this is usually in an animal. So this is in an animal, like you or I. And this is a, a good example of this would be uh, the ringworm ascomyocete. That's a fungus that does this within animals. So it's a ringworm asco my seat fungi. Um, this is what actually directly results in athlete's foot. Athlete's foot is a fungal infection characterized by the presence of a ringworm ascomycete causing mycosis, causing a fungal infection within a foot of the human being in this situation. And also, in terms of mycosis, you can eventually get to something known as systemic mycosis. Very, very bad. Very, very harsh. Systemic means it's throughout the entire system, throughout the entire animal, essentially. This is going to be a moment at which we have spores that are typically going to be inhaled, Spores are inhaled, and then because they're inhaled, they actually then spread throughout, spread and grow, I would say. Spread and grow is the key word here as well. Spread plus grow throughout the body. And that would lead to a systemic fungal infection, a systemic mycosis event throughout the body. So that's a very, very bad, very, very harsh form of mycosis. This is a less harsh form that can be treated with medication. Finally, last and but certainly not least, uh, the practical uses of fungi are nearly endless, but we'll categorize a couple of them. Of course, first and foremost uh, is consumption. Fungi can be consumed by us as humans. Um, specifically, the morals and truffles are very, very fancy, very, very expensive forms of fungus consumption that we do as humans. They are also used in cheese production. Okay, cheese production. So next time you have cheese, thank the fungus for their capabilities in cheese production. Yeast, of course are fungus, they are unicellular fungus, and thus they are practical to us. They are very practical to college students specifically, um, classic because of the fact that they are fermenting anaerobes, yeast. And because they're fermenting anaerobes, they have this magical capability of turning sugar, they turn sugar to every college student's favorite drink, well, not every, but a lot of people's uh, alcohol, turns sugar to alcohol. And that is the yeast practical use. Definitely practical for many of you um, who are watching this, at least. Um, there are also important research organisms. Fungi are important research organisms. Uh, one to remember specifically is S. cerevis. Uh, sir, I want to make sure I spelled this correctly, Cerevisae. Uh, I remember learning about this fungi actually when I took genetics um, because this is a fungus that's specifically utilized for its molecular genetics capabilities. It's very good at giving us a nice model organism to study molecular genetics. If you take genetics, you'll see this again. And finally, 
in medicine, something many people taking biology want to pursue. Um, they are very useful antibiotics, specifically the penicillium. Remember the penicillium that we classified before? That was a moldy bread antibiotic that eventually turned into, a, into an antibiotic known as penicillin. So, lots of information. I totally understand. Lots of memorization. Totally understand. Please do not lose sight of the fact that fungi are everywhere, that fungi are successful, that fungi are useful, and fungi are definitely of great importance to us, and thus this is why we study them. Hopefully you've gained a greater appreciation for this group of unicons. We'll continue our progression from simple and uh, to the most complex of organisms as we move forward throughout Bio 2.